we're a little different this morning boys and girls on an extremely misty or foggy morning this here is not wildlife trust curtain wood just outside the village of curtain in between curtain and eggmanton and a lovely little walk it is too i'm hoping to find some wild garlic we'll see so we didn't have to walk far before we came across this plant here and obviously this is on the path so it's no good to me but if we pick a leaf up and have a look at it this is ramson's or wild garlic you squeeze it in your fingers and have a sniff and it smells distinctly of garlic so if we have to walk a little bit further down the path usually where you find one patch you will find another and if it's up there it should be up throughout the wood and I'm assuming haha no that's not the stuff you can see the difference on the leaf there that is definitely not it well we'll keep looking but I'm sure there'll be some that's not on the beaten track that we can pick and uh, take home to use in, in a dish. Yeah, there's quite a lot dotted around in the greenery. If you know what you're looking for, it really does kind of stand out for you. Let me put this in the other hand. This is the stuff, so don't obviously take everything off each plant, but a few leaves like that, that will recover. It grows from a bulb, much like garlic and onions do. But this, I can throw in a stir fry tonight. There's enough for about, for about one person there. Adds a mild garlic flavour. And it'll wilt down much like spinach or pok choy or any other leafy greens. But oh, there's a ton of it over here, look. Once you spot it, it just jumps out at you everywhere you go. That's looking slightly more sparse than where I harvested from a moment ago, so we'll leave that little bit to increase. And yeah, tend not to pick anything along the edges of the path for obvious reasons, dogs and that kind of thing. But if you have got a dog with you, then dogs tend to pee where other dogs pee. So that's one good indicator for recognising if another dog's been along and uh, and peed on your morning your morning forage <laughs> one way of avoiding it <clears throat> right let's go out into the field as you can see it's extremely foggy today I'm going to go down this way and then across a little um, stream bridge and then back into the woods do a loop and then off to the brewery. Well, thank you very much. Walk done, and it looks like we are definitely having a stir fry of some sort for tea tonight. Some absolutely lovely wild garlic. There we have it. So I'm just going to put this in the fridge, and then before I use it, I'll refresh it in a bowl of extremely cold water, and then we'll cook it up. We're in boys and girls and uh, we are mashing. We're just going to do a batch of proof of concept today and almost on cue we've had a delivery of, that's right, Brewflex. There we go. Lovely clean pipe. I might remove this wrap seeing as it's a little bit loose. Last time I left it on for protection, but this isn't going to stay, is it? So we've got 10 metres of this new Brewflex. You can see T5701 Brewflex uh, D16 bar beer, wine, beverages. And I'm hoping it says it on here. Probably won't, though. It is rated to 120 degrees but now it doesn't say it on there by the looks of things 
but I have it on a good authority because they sent across their spec sheet. So there we go. Let's get this changed over after we've mashed in, of course. You never leave a mash ton awaiting. It's actually quite a good lesson that I was just joking then, but you know, when you are mashing in, you've got 15 minutes once you've added the water. The majority of the conversion has taken place within that 15 minutes. You really need to get on top of your mash temps within that time scale. And then of course at the end of the day when you've finished, dig your mash out when it's, well let it drain of course, but when it's warm, it's much easier to rinse off uh, warm wet sugars than it is dry cold sugars. It's just a sticky mess the next day. And it's lazy. Come on, dig your mash tons out boys. Well, there we go, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, fellas. That is another brew in the bag. Not a brew in the bag, but you know, another brew complete. You know what I mean? Stop complicating it. Excuse me, I've got the radio on. I just saw that I was um, transferring that yeast in there in a rather cool fashion. And I thought, oh sugar, I've not got much video footage today. So I decided to whip the phone out as quickly as possible. What am I doing? And unfortunately that meant that the radio had to remain on. But you'll forgive me for that, won't you? I'll turn the radio off and then we'll talk. Well, anyone would think I'd never made a video before, wouldn't they? Because I always end up crashing the audio. And that's something I'm doing now with these chillers and the pumps, of course, it can't be helped. So, just zoom out a little bit. Today, the cooling fan for the brewery came on. That comes on at 20 degrees, so that means the roof space was 20 degrees. Therefore, I knew right away we're going to have to start cooling the hop store and the beer that's in the cellars. So, we've now got... The Classic 1000, Cornelius Classic 1000, and the R290 Hydrocarbon Cooler, fired up and doing their thing. And as you can see, the new one has pulled down to minus one already. Can you see? But the old one, uh, she's plugging away 4.6. She will get there though, that's the good thing about it. But you know what that means, don't you folks? That means we have to increase carbonating pressures because the average temperature in here has gone up. So if we have a look on this handy jolly good beer uh, carbonation chart, I think we're about, shall we say, 12 degrees now. So we want to be up in it to about 18 psi. Uh, just two or three, that should do us, we'll put it on 20. And also that means our electric bill's gonna double. So not only are we cooling the fermenters, but we're cooling the beer as well. As well as heating the bugger with the boil kettle. But it's been another productive day, and we've got a beer in the bag. You know what I feel like doing? Going home. Double distraction there, excuse moi. So we've got an overflowing. I could do with pulling that slightly away from there, couldn't I? That needs reworking. It's dropping straight on top of that. But yeah, we've got an overflowing HLT. Me talking about going home and drinking some beer. And then uh, the delivery lady arrives with this. Even the parcel's warm. She was sweating, honestly. She looked like a blind lesbian in a fish shop. And I'm not sure what she's brought, but I am intrigued. Let's have a look. I'm good at doing these uh, one-handed, terribly shot, crass videos, aren't I? 
just defended all of the lesbian viewers of the channel, including myself. Right, let's get into this box. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, I know I could make another joke there. I'm not gonna do though. Well. Right, let's see if we can just use brute force and ignorance. More ignorance than force, I think. What's in here? What's in the box, Angelos? It's gonna be something really boring, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. Thank you for your purchase. What did we buy? Can you tell what it is yet? That's right. Well, it is the season. So all of our friends will soon be getting free eggs. No, they're not free. Pound a dozen. You've got to pay for the egg boxes. So yeah, we've got eggs. And egg boxes. There are more things that should have been delivered today, though. Um, I need, I've got a stamp for the eggs as well to put the dates on. That wasn't really worth the interlude, was it? Some bloody egg boxes, that was rather boring. I bet you was all hoping it was something to do with brewing. Alas, no. Right, let's go through into the workshop. And I'm going to show you a couple of things while we finish off this transfer. I probably am going to go home and have some beers as well. Uh, and I've got some slabs to lay in the back garden near the ch chicken pen, so I might show you that. So, pH meter, batteries have died on it. It takes four of these, can you believe it? It's absolutely ridiculous. And then these uh, CR123As are the batteries for the tilt hydrometers. And then this bad boy, you may recall, we've got one of these on the boil pump. And, well, I love it. It's probably one of the best things I've fitted this year for convenience. It's just so much better having a big pad switch up near, uh, you know, hip height, rather than bending down to operate the tacky switches that come on most pumps. And this is an IP... 65 IP 66 even better and uh, with the correct gland fittings we're going to install that on the CIP pump so a little upgrade there I've still not tidied half of this uh, workshop I've got to put all these now defunct power supplies into storage I bought myself some new heat shrink because I had every size but the one I wanted so a new pack of those still not utilized the uh, ink bird we did use it for conditioning beer in the warm room over Christmas but it's not been used since I've got a radio from home stopped working for some reason I want to give that a little bit of an inspection the uh, jacks are still sitting there stationary until of course we start moving forwards on the press break project which may be uh, a couple of weeks yet if not a bit longer considering the fluctuating price of steel and also there is a new ring roller that I've got my eye on on a bidding uh, a liquidation website bid spotter and I will I'm hoping to get it so I can ring roll angle iron I can't ring roll angle iron at the moment on that machine. That's just for flat sheet steel. If I get a ring roller for angle, then I can not only make all the tanks I want to make, uh, I can also roll the support bands like this stuff here. And this is 3x40 angle. Hopefully, the one I'm getting will do 5x50. So Effectively, I could do, if the rollers are deep enough, if I can do 5 by 50 let's say that the, they'll accommodate 60 mil angle or bigger. Can you get 60 mil angle? You must be able to. Then I could do a bigger angle 
uh, as long as the material was thinner, like, I don't know, 3 mil. Who knows? And it'll bend box section, it'll bend tube, it'll bend flat bar, it'll bend um, angle leg in, angle leg out, and anything else. It'll, it'll even do the okie cokey. And uh, we've also got a few other bits that we picked up on an auction website today, which we're going to hopefully be picking up on Friday. So there may be a vlog in that. And that's it for the day. Not sure what's going on with the purple tilt. It's doubled up. And the red looks like orange on the, co on the uh, phone screen. But it's, uh, it's definitely red. The purple, I believe is yesterday's Amarillo IPA. Anyway, let's get out of here. It's really noisy with that pump running, so I'm off home. So this is the little patch of ground that needs sorting out. But these slabs stood here over winter for a while. So I just squared off this brickwork the other day and I just want to drop about nine slabs down here and hopefully uh, we can lay them relatively level this is where they used to be so I'm going to have to knock these bricks off and relay some supports because I don't have enough backfill to uh, lay them lay them straight on the soil you want your cluckers? unless I laid them inside the brickwork that would have been novel, wouldn't it? Well, I'm managing to get away with it using some of the existing brickwork that's in here. I mean, I do remember putting this in, but like, having a look at the level, it can't have been me, can it? I don't know if I've ever laid anything that level before. Oh, there's a mosquito trying to get me as well. So, uh, yeah. This young lady has not stopped watching. She's looking for the worms. So I've got three down, pretty level. And uh, they're just, I'm roughing them out at the minute. And then I'm going to work from back to front and put a blob of muck, mortar, gobbo, whatever you like, on each one. Oh, these mosquitoes are starting to be a problem. And then uh, they all work back and then let it go off overnight. That's a noisy fella, isn't it? Well, with fast fading light, I managed to pull it off, sailor, and uh, we managed to use the broken slabs along this back edge. I'll probably just fill that with cement or something, or even some low-growing herbs like thyme. So if we catch them, then they'll smell nice. I need to get on the inside of the chicken pen and fit some kickboards, because obviously they're kicking all the um, soil out of the pen. There's a section there as well, I just chucked the rest of what was left over in terms of the muck. And then down here I've left open as well for drainage and to allow the rats to get in and out from underneath the shed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I also had to get off reg. I had to stagger the joints because as you saw some of those bricks that were there from the original support, I was able to use them. And then that's an original edge as well down there, so what I did was I sat everything that way a little bit to take up some of that original edge and that allowed me to just catch the edges of those original bricks. It's probably going to move, but it's good enough for light use. It's only in and out of the chicken pen and in and out of the shed to get the lawnmower and obviously get the eggs. But I'm very, very happy with that. So there's another long day. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you on the next one. Just a finishing note, all these slabs have had winter algae, algal bloom on them, so I'm going to jet wash the majority of them, if we're able to build the extension that we want to, sort of from where Reggie's stood, are going to come up anyway, so we'll have these as spares, but I'm going to jet wash all this and paint the 
block work in fact the block work might be coming down so I probably won't bother painting that but I need to paint the stuff for the chicken pen and I need to paint the shed so when it's all done in a couple of weeks time I'll make sure I get a nice shot of it so you can see how nicely these buff slabs actually do come up cheers well I know you're gonna ask where well, where did that garlic go well it's gone into a wild garlic a mushroom chopped suey with some beef and broccoli, ladies and gentlemen. That's tonight's tea. See you tomorrow.